Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 76 of the Whitey and Will Sports Show. Today is Sunday, May 28th, 2023, and uh, we have got uh, we've got sectional championships for St. Anthony High School to talk about. They won a softball sectional this week. They won a baseball sectional this weekend. And uh, hey, listen, Effingham won a regional baseball championship. Effingham's girls played in a softball regional championship. We'll talk about all that. But uh, on the phone, calling in to talk about the St. Anthony baseball team first. We got Matt Robinson to come back because we just can't get enough Matt Robinson in our lives. And uh, that's more, it. More importantly, he uh, he broadcast uh, St. Anthony's sectional championship against South Central. He was there. Uh, so he's got a little better um, understanding of how that game went. So, Matt, thanks for joining us. I know you're you've got a lot going on today, but uh, you promised us a few minutes and we're going to we're going to get St. Anthony out of the way and let you get on with your evening. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to join in. I uh, wanted to reestablish the lead as most times as a guest on the show. So <laughs> now, I know that you've uh, now won some, some Larry, yeah, some Larry Wilson character tried to tried to catch me. So yeah, it's okay. He 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 even wrote a book just to just yeah. just to get on, just to get on the show. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. and and he uh, he signed my copy, made a very nice comment, and I was very that's something I'll treasure for a long long time. Was it the signed version or like the stamp signature? <laughs> no, I watched him sign it. I watched oh, him sign it. Okay. So, right. so he couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> so um, Matt, uh, St. Anthony, and I actually was at St. Anthony's game with KZ, their semifinal game at the Altamont sectional. Mm -hmm. That one, that one was a 13 nothing game, and it was uh it was pretty much the domination that uh, I think pretty much everyone expected. KZ kind of Got by a regional that wasn't quite as challenging as some of the others, and St. Anthony took care of business. But then they ran into South Central yesterday on Saturday, and they ran into Aiden Dodson, and that one had the makings of a nice little pitcher's duel. And for quite a while, it was, and then St. Anthony pulled away. But uh, we figure your insights on the game are, you know, pretty valuable. So I don't know, give us the lowdown. How did it go down yesterday? Well, you know, I, I really get the feeling and while watching the game that it was about as close as a six to one game can really be. Both teams were making plays and especially South Central on defense. And but the issue with South Central is they just well, they only got two hits in the game. And it was kind of an unusual outing for Brock Fearday in the sense that he threw a one hitter through six and six and a third. Um and but he but he walked, I believe, seven and hit a batter as well. Mm -hmm. And that's very un Brock Fear Day like. But he never allowed him to have a big hit. And you know, that really I mean, South Central scored their only run in the first inning without the benefit of a hit. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sacrifice fly, right? Yeah, um, Th Chase Thompson, who is a player that I have respected for a long time for South Central. He's batting bat and lead off for them. He drew actually got hit by a pitch the first at bat. And then Dodson walked and Anthony Benera moved him up on a ground ball in the infield. And then Andrew Magnus hit a sacrifice fly to right field. I mean, just doing his job there, driving in a run. And you thought, oh, this is gonna be a tough one, you know, if you know for St. Anthony with South Central just doing what they needed to do early, you know. And, but, and that's uh South Central is the kind of team that just does things like that, right? They play such good fundamental baseball because, you know, obviously of who's in the dugout there. Yeah, Kurt Jones is a wonderful coach. Been at it for a long time. I was so happy for him when they won the state tournament a couple of years ago and uh, just have a ton of respect for him. And, yeah, I mean, they always are putting pressure on you. And that's what they did throughout basically the first three or four innings. They always had runners on, but – but uh, St. Anthony worked out of it, and probably the the luckiest break that St. Anthony caught on the day was uh, in the second inning. They had runners on first and and second with one out, and uh, Chase Thompson absolutely hit a line drive that was a bullet. But it was pretty much right at Eli Levitt at second base, 
Kane had got to second base and they doubled up the runner there who really didn't have a chance. I mean, you know, sometimes there's a double play and you're like, oh, come on, kid, you got to know better. That wasn't the case there at all. Mm -hmm. And so that took him out of probably, like I said, that was probably the luckiest break of the day for St. Anthony as far as avoiding trouble and allowing runs. But there was a, go ahead. No, no, go, keep going, keep going. Well, I was just going to say there was, I mean, South Central actually made some wonderful defensive plays. Um, In particular, uh, their third baseman, Callaway Smith, made an absolutely fantastic over-the-shoulder grab um, on a pop-up off of the bat of Aiden Loritzen after Connor Repke had walked and went to second on a wild pitch. And he was running down the third base line into left field and just made a fabulous catch. But Connor Repke was alert enough to realize no one was covering third base and he saw it was in foul territory. So he went and tagged up and he made it to third. And then ultimately he came in on a, uh, on a base hit and scored. So that was the first run of the game, but it was just like every time South central did something good defensively, it somehow still worked out for St. Anthony. And there was none other play and no other play that emphasized that more than the home run off the bat of Brock here day. Yeah, when did that happen? Uh, what was the what was the situation there? The game was tied at one in the fourth inning. Brock led off the inning, and he absolutely belted one in the right center field gap. And the way it happened, uh, the right fielder Andrew Magnus he he was chasing it down, and off the bat, I did not think he had a chance to get there. Well, from where we're sitting, he sticks his glove up. Well, we're behind home plate, so we're roughly 340 feet away from this. <laughs> yeah, You can't tell if it hit his glove and bounced over the fence or if he missed it and then it hit the ground and bounced over the fence or if he caught it. But then what it turned out to be is our understanding is he caught the ball in the glove, took two or three strides and hit the fence at Aldemont, which is only about four feet tall. And the ball bounced out of his glove and went over the fence. Oh, my. So it's a controversial well, man, home run, to say the least. And I was listening to you guys do the game. And, yeah, you and Mason, you know, you can, again, you're as far as you are from the play, you were trying to figure out what had actually happened yourselves because I think they called the umpires together and then Coach Jones talked to uh, the umpires a little bit too. And right fielder came in and talked. Mm-hmm. And I mean, to the to the umpire's credit, the first base umpire went out a little ways into right field, and he saw the ball go over the fence. Apparently, you know, I mean, it clearly did. The fan went and picked up the ball at the fence, and you know, gave it back. So I I don't know how else he could have ruled on it. And of course, South Central's argument is. He caught the ball and took a couple of steps. Now, what is the official IHSA rule on that? I honestly can't tell you. It used to be you had to take the ball out of the glove with your opposite hand. But I don't know that that's the rule anymore. Because I know it changed in the major leagues. Well, and and you're also in a situation where, you know, and he he could be the most honest kid in the world, but you're relying on taking the word of a kid who's wanting to win a ball game, too. And you never know what's going to happen. That's the thing. You never know what's going to happen. You've got to rely on what the umpires see or believe they saw. I don't under, I, I don't see a way, and even while they were ta- discussing it, I'm like, I, I did not see a way that they could overturn that call. Yeah. And it's just, it was a tough, tough break against South Central. But, of course, after the game, Kurt Jones, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk with him on the air. Uh, it's just one of those things where it takes a lot of time. He was very gracious, came over anyway when we were packing stuff up. And he, I mean, you know, he's like, this is what we, what we interpreted happened. This is what they said. It's baseball. That's the way it went. Mm-hmm. He said, and ultimately it was just one run, but right. you go from a tie game to a two, one game in the fourth. That's a, that's a big run, obviously. Sure. Yeah. And luckily it didn't and, stay two, one, I guess. So, you know, that, that, yeah. that takes a little onus off of the call. I think that's a more than fair statement. It took a lot of sting out of it since 
you know, if it had ended two to one, that would have been, would have been really tough. But uh, St. Anthony scored three more runs in the next inning, took advantage of a walk. Ryan Schmidt got a single. Um, and Eli Levitt doubled at the base of the left field fence, driving in another run. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, St. Anthony started to get to Dodson a little bit, even though Dodson struck out 10, just walked three, you know, had a couple of wild pitches in there that moved runners up in the scoring position and things like that. But, I mean, Aiden Dodson was his typical self in a sense of, I mean, throwing hard, throwing strikes. When he, he kind of lost control of the curveball a little bit in the second inning, but, got it back and I mean he uh he pitched a good game you know it was pretty good defense from South Central but again they only got one hit off of Brock Fearday and they used him to start the seventh inning knowing he had thrown 111 pitches going into it but they wanted to keep Eli Levitt's pitch count down right is ultimately who they brought in so he would be available to go on uh on on tomorrow morning on Monday morning as long as he closed out the game pretty efficiently. And he did give up a CNI single, but he got the last two outs. And, you know, it's St. Anthony played a very good fundamental game and, and, and got the, got the win. So Matt Levitt's pitch count wasn't enough of a factor that will be any impact on tomorrow. You don't believe by your understanding. Levitt is completely available to pitch tomorrow. The only, the only person who cannot pitch for St. Anthony tomorrow Fairday. is Brock here today. Okay. And again, he pitched a, a very good game. He did not give in to batters and South Central's got hitters that if you give in to them, they're going to make you pay. And right. sometimes, you know, he walked a couple of guys and, but he found a way to get out of innings too. So, I mean, that's, you just got to give him a ton of credit for, <laughs> for what he did. And then he drove in a run with a sacrifice fly the deep center field and uh you know he hit the ball pretty solidly it was it was kind of funny when St. Anthony did hit the ball off of Dotson they squared it up pretty well because Connor Repke had a triple in there you know I mean when they got him they got him yeah so did uh did you think was there anything in the back of your mind with the game being six to one that maybe instead of Levitt they might use Brock Jansen because he didn't have to he only threw he threw fewer than fifty pitches. I don't know what the rules are, but I think he would have been available by by then. I'm not sure, but uh, I would uh, I would I would have to double check what, what, whether or not he would have even been available. But I, they were coming to the top of the order with uh, with Thompson and 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 Dodson actually hit a hard ground ball to the shortstop for the final out. Uh-huh. So I mean I. <laughs> If I'm Coach Craig in that spot, I'm I'm bringing up my whoever I think is going to be most effective to get the job done and finish that game. Yeah, I and I'm going to hope there. that he you can do it very efficiently. Yeah, you don't want South Central to string together a couple of hits, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden now you go to another pitcher, and then there's a walk, and you know now it's a different, entirely different ball game. Yeah, I mean, if, if a couple of guys gets on, all of a sudden you're looking at Benera and Magnus coming up with a chance, with a chance. I mean, right. we don't see a lot of home runs at Aldemont. It's a little bit of a bigger field. But, you know, you don't want to give them a chance, in my opinion. 40, 46 to 60 pitches, you have to have two days of rest. So they could have they could have used him um, by my mm-hmm. guess anyway. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i not necessarily trying to say, oh, why didn't Tony do this or that? I'm just sort of no. playing devil's advocate, you know, kind of, uh, you know. That's, but, that's the beauty of baseball. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and you know, you can try something, and just because it worked doesn't necessarily mean it was right, and just because it doesn't work doesn't mean it was wrong in sure. baseball. That's, that's like just the nature closer, of that beast. Like your clothes are blowing the same, I, same sense. Really. Yeah, I I walked in and turned on the TV right when he walked to. So <laughs> okay, Matt. I got to experience the joy of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, real quick, you know, before we let you get on your way. Um, we can't have you on here and not talk about you and Mason working together. Um, and for, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know Mason Robinson, you know, he recently graduated from Altamont high school. So uh, a very young man with no formal broadcasting experience, but he, he's seen you and heard you in action a number of times and he knew clearly knew just what to do and sounded, uh, 
Hey, he sounded pretty pretty darn good, I thought, uh, in his broadcast. I'm, I'm not so sure Greg Sapp didn't get a text about Mason carrying his dad during the broadcast. That's what I heard. I don't know <laughs> well, if that's Well, that's true. a pretty heavy load. <laughs> that's a, but, you know, and but, then, Saturday he was doing a little play-by-play, Whitey. I didn't catch that. Uh-huh. I didn't catch that. Well, I he, think uh, Matt was, had to get a drink or something, and Mason just took over and wouldn't give it up for about an inning, so. No, it was actually, very, very good. Go ahead. Actually, Matt. when we went and did the game on uh, T Town's game against uh-huh. uh, uh, the Griffins and Father McGivney, mm-hmm. um, that was the first time we were together. And, you know, it was one of those deals where we kind of had to find people. And actually, George suggested that I ask him. And yeah. I had thought about him doing a game, but I didn't. I figured it'd be a year or two down the road, you know, just not not right after he graduated, but he was on board and, and he did the first couple of innings and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. So I let him do play by play of the fourth and fifth inning of the T-Town game. And, uh, and because I really, really initially thought, well, this is just going to be his one time to do it at least for a long while, you know? And so I thought, well, he's doing pretty good with this. Let's let him do an inning or two and see how he feels about it. And, you know, as far as the play-by-play and we just kind of figured that that would probably be it but circumstances arose where we have plenty of teams still to follow and and uh they've asked him to come along and he'll be with me again tomorrow for the saint anthony game and he did mention that at the end of the broadcast the other night he goes well it would still be much better to be playing in this game but uh this was a pretty good alternate situation for him and he enjoyed it so yep well he's uh you know having been around him a little bit here and there when we've gone on the road for games, I didn't really figure he would be too shy about it. You know, he's, that's not his nature at all. And that's the biggest thing is just um, being, being willing to talk and that's never been a problem. Mm -hmm. So no, no, but go ahead, Matt. It is, it is just a, it is just a different scenario as you guys well know when you're actually on the radio and it's like, Okay, people are actually listening, <laughs> you know, and and you don't and you don't always realize who, but we had a lot of kind comments. A lot of people messaged me and and messaged the radio station and that sort of stuff, and that was very much appreciated. It was a fun, it's been a fun opportunity, and like I say, we, you know, he's he's going to be going again tomorrow with me, and yep. and we'll just see how that one goes, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Goreville, I did a little bit of research on them, not too much just yet, but I mean, they've been in seven straight sectional championship games. So Yeah, they're no strength uh, at this level of play. Not at all. And so that has to be something that that will benefit them a little bit, but I still like St. Anthony's chances. I mean, it's baseball, anything can happen, but well, I tell you they they have been playing some good ball. They should be playing with a ton of confidence, and and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, seeing hopefully a victory for them. And then, boy, if we get another NTC team, even in the final four, much less to win it all, that would really be a feather to the cap of the conference as well as our entire area. Yeah, and 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 you mentioned the T Towns uh, sectional game, and we don't have to really dig into it, but I do T Town. A nice finish to the season, quite honestly. And, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm happy for Jordan Taylor that they managed to mm-hmm. win that regional and that they managed to get, you know, get their record up over 500 and all that. Uh, you know, it uh, there were some challenging points in the season, but, uh, you know, he had to kind of step into a situation where there's an established coach and a way of doing things. And, and uh, you know, that's not an easy thing and a lot of eyes on no. you, know, a lot of underlying pressure. And uh, oh, absolutely! Did a great job uh, finishing off the year. Yeah, that's a very tricky uh, spot to be in, and Jordan did great. Are you guys getting on the road about seven o'clock tomorrow? Maybe a little earlier, even than that. Uh, Well, (laughs) I I told Mister Sapp I probably needed to get a little more rest from all my travels, and Mm -hmm. you know I would be up well before then. Trust me. But uh, I enjoy listening to you guys both times so much that uh, I said, hey, listening to those guys again or me getting hauling my butt down to 
Carbondale. Well, I, I said, that's a good father-son bonding time. And, you know, you may have to buy him breakfast or lunch on the way. So, Yeah, so yeah, that, from... that's no different than, than any other time, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, we'll let you get on with your evening, but we do appreciate you. Uh, giving us uh, giving us a little time tonight, and uh, looking forward to finding out how St. Anthony does with the baseball tomorrow, and hearing a little bit of it. I won't get to listen to to very much. Mm-hmm. The softball game will be going yeah. on, but uh, you know, it'll be should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah. Best of luck to Coach Taylor and the St. Anthony girls team as well. You know, uh, it's it's been fun to watch them and and their success that they've put together. And, uh, boy, it's a big challenge, but uh, they'll be up to it. Yep. Exciting time for St. Anthony High School. So, Matt, thanks a lot. And, uh, Matt, bring back a W and uh, go to Quattro's for lunch after the game. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. All right. Thanks very much, <laughs> thanks, Matt. Thanks, guys. Robinson. A pleasure to be on with you. All thanks, right. Matt. All right. That was Matt Robinson, radio personality extraordinaire. And, um, you know, uh, now, not the only talented broadcaster in his family. So, yeah. You know. And I'll tell you what, I and I, we're not doing this frivol- frivolously. Mesa did a tremendous job. He did. Yeah. And it was natural, and he wasn't. He talked. Yeah. And he imparted. He shared knowledge and knowing the kids. He knew the South Central kids. He knew the St. Anthony kids. You know, that's and, the and it was, that's the thing I liked about it. And he knew what they were doing. Oh, here's, you know, this one was a slider. And yeah, that's, that, that was the perfect game for him to work. I mean, if you take out the emotional aspect of it, which is that he he would much rather be playing in the game. But but yeah, I mean, team two teams he's very familiar with, you know, not just. You know, he can – it's not just observing this game. It's observing players that he has four years of experience facing. So, yeah, pretty – Right, no, he did. And like I said, and I heard a little bit of him, uh, the T-Town Father and Gibney game as well. And yep. I know the uh, Pops also reached out to Matt via text. I talked to him. Yeah. I said, you listen to this? And he says, yes, and I've already texted Matt, so – and let me tell you something. Um, Alan Witt worked with me, the Altamont coach. Mm-hmm. He worked with me Wednesday. Was it Wednesday night? Uh, yeah, Wednesday night at that uh, Saint, uh, Altamont sectional with the St. Anthony Casey game. And yeah, and, yeah, I listened to that game. That game didn't lend itself to so much mm-hmm. analysis because St. Anthony pretty boring did what they needed to do. But but uh, Alan was excited to do it, and Good. and, uh, and uh, you know he's. He he's a little more soft spoken than Mason, but had quality things to say and wasn't shy about saying them. So that was, uh, I think that was a lot of fun to to just get. To, and plus, you know, I got to do play by play for the entire game, which I right. that's that's good for the ego, you know. Get well, and and I heard him say during your broadcast that he's not as chatty as Mason. So who is really? I'm well, not, yeah. Well, maybe me. Yeah. Well, that's also that's also a fair point. So anyway, we got St. Anthony covered, T-Town baseball covered. Um, let's go. What do we What do we want to do? Let's now? touch on Effingham. Effingham uh, baseball or softball first? I was. Let's touch on softball real quick. You did that. Yeah, I was at the Effingham. Uh, they first of all they they won their regional semifinal against Mattoon. They walked. Uh, it was a walk off. Third time. Third time that they beat Mattoon in that fashion this year, and. Uh, that got them into the championship game down at Centralia, which, by the way, no offense to the folks who uh, take care of the field at Rotary Park in Centralia, but it does not hurt to put a little water on that thing once in a while. Uh, it was it was extremely dusty, an all-dirt infield, and every time anybody even kicked their foot, it just blew dirt across the field and because it was a windy day. And, uh, yeah, that's- yeah. I think Morgan played a regional game down there one year. They beat uh- – they beat somebody the first round of a regional, and yeah, it's uh, didn't affect the game. Or no, I'm, but you, you, you sometimes wonder with a lot of the facilities schools have. I know the AH, IHSA tries to spread the wealth, but you know, come on, let's let's give them to the places that have a good facility. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a good facility. The field was just dusty. I mean, all it would have taken was all it would have taken is a hose and you know, 20, 30 minutes and a couple rakes, and you would have been good to go. You know, but all right. well, I understand. But uh, anyway, Effingham. I mean, they got beat uh, five to two against Charleston. Charleston. Yeah. Now, have they Charleston. split earlier in the year? With they Charleston? split earlier in the year, but here's the deal, and I didn't know it until later. But uh, Charleston pitcher in the Apollo doubleheader that they split the girl the girl who pitched both of those games did not pitch for them um Friday it was a oh. different pitcher that they used uh right. they went with a change of pace um and she didn't she didn't give up much you know uh Effingham scored an unearned run in the second inning they had runners on second and third and uh, the catcher tried to back pick somebody at third base and threw it out into left field, and that let one run come across. And then Sidney Donaldson, the next inning, hit a uh, solo home run. But other than that, Effingham had five hits in the game, and they just couldn't they couldn't get anything across. And and Charleston, meanwhile, um, scored three runs in the second inning. Uh, they they had a, their number seven hitter. Uh, hit a, I mean, a no doubter of a home run to left field, and and uh, and they got one more after that. That was a two run homer. Uh, Natalie Armstrong, it was kind of interesting. She's pitched all year long for Effingham. Um, she's a freshman. She's had to step in because Sage Altoff had a, um, I believe, a rotator cuff issue that um, kept her kept her from uh, doing much pitching after pitching almost exclusively for Effingham as a freshman last year. But that was Armstrong a freshman. Yeah, Armstrong's a freshman. And Altoff actually got cleared to throw recently and had thrown a handful of innings. Uh, they brought and, and it's very clear what they were doing right when they got through the Charleston order two times, which would have been there was one out in the fourth inning. They went right to Altoff and change over. Don't see someone three times. Yeah, and you know, Altoff, she she gave up a little bit. You know, she she throws a little harder than Armstrong does, um, but uh, you know, they got a they got a couple of runs off of her. Um, Effingham had one chance. It was a four to two game. They had a girl try to score on a wild pitch, and there's just not very much space behind home plate, and the catcher was able to cr- collect the ball, and then rather than throw yeah. pitcher yeah. covering, she just dove in and tagged her. And uh, it was a great play, uh, and and that s- saved a run. And I don't think it ended the inning. I'm looking to see. Yeah, it did end the inning. It ended the uh, it ended the sixth inning. So that was a that was a kind of. So at that point, it was four two. That point, it was four two. It would have made it a four three game. And yeah, and you know anybody three. can get in the way of one one swing of the bat. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was a pretty key play. One of the thing to to note, uh, Effingham. Uh, their third baseman, uh, Abby Cunningham. There was a yeah, play. I heard. I don't. I didn't hear what happened, but I heard you guys talking about it when after the that. And it sounds like she's ultimately okay, but she's okay. Third base, so she's there's a little pop fly foul. Uh, it's one of those that's, you're not sure if it's going to land in out of play or if it's going to land right right by the fence. So mm-hmm. she's tracking it toward the third base dugout, which is the Charleston dugout. Um, the, the dugout sits on a little bit of a concrete block. There's probably like an I, – I mean, I didn't go over there and look, but an inch inch or two lip, inch mm-hmm. and a half, something like that, uh, where the concrete is taller than the dirt. And she tripped over that as she was going toward the door of their dugout. So mm-hmm. a couple of freak things, right? She trips, and also she just happens to be right in front of the door of this dugout as opposed to just any other part of the fence where, you know, right. she, she just hits the fence, the fence and bounces back. Well, instead, she trips, she falls headfirst into this dugout, which happens to have this metal bat rack in it, like a pipe, a pipe bat, bat rack. And she apparently, apparently got hit like right in here somewhere. Okay. And, I mean, she was hurting bad enough that they took her to the hospital. And, okay. and her dad got a hold of the station and said that there was no, you know, as it turns out, nothing, no, just nothing, banged up pretty good. nothing major. She just was sore and hurt, but okay. luckily, like, uh, doesn't look like it's going to be a long-term thing, which is great. Cause I mean, you just think, I mean, she's running full bore, right? Like she was running with a full yeah. head of steam. 
And uh, that could have turned out a lot worse. We, we couldn't see what was going on, so we weren't sure. But, uh, you know, it could have uh, it could have put uh, could have put a real plowed over what was already an unfortunate day because you lose a regional championship. But, right. you know, Effingham won 20 games this year and and they're they won, young and they've got almost everybody back. The Boone girl is graduating. Reagan Boone. She's going to go to Western and uh, play. The Cunningham and, sisters are both gone. That's is that. Do you have any other seniors? I don't think so. No, I think that uh, that's that's a uh, that's a young team. They've got yeah. uh, they've got a lot coming back. They've got now two pitchers that have got lots of varsity experience um, and some pretty pretty darn good hitters returning to the fold next year. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what Effingham does and hopefully. Hopefully Jerry Triggs back will start feeling a little better at some point too. He's 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 really soldiering through, but you can you can tell that uh Yeah, I I've, I've seen him out there in golf season and you can tell he's hurt. And he's you know, I know Morgan has worked at the junior high level um with one of the Boris twins. I think it's Katie. Yes, yes not, it is. Okay. And I know that they've had two pretty good two pretty good years of kids come through that junior high program. Well, and I'm hearing names when you guys are doing the game. I'm hearing names of kids that they've had. Yep. Well, you know, that's that's such a big thing uh, that they're getting that proper instruction at the lower levels and being oh, prepared. Yeah. You know, I mean, good. a lot of schools don't a lot of schools don't have that. They just no. you know, whether it's people that just aren't a lot of times junior high coaching jobs, people just sort of get like people just have it thrust upon them. You know, they work at the school. Yeah, they or might want to. But uh, Good for the money to fatten the retirement. Well, that or like you're, you're a young teacher that's looking to get hired, and right? They say, then they just hey, need to fill a vacancy, and we, you get picked. Yeah, we need you to we need you to coach junior high track team because you know we don't have anybody, and you're like I don't right. know anything about track, but you do it because you want to get hired, right? That's right. No, I I agree, and it's that's how programs are built. You know, look at the Kent Niebergies of the world and what they've done, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's yeah. how you get programs. So. All yeah, right. good job by them. You know, getting the regional final—that's good. And and Effingham baseball is a regional champion. They won. Uh, they won the only regional. They beat Marion eight to one in the championship game. Mm-hmm. Kate Dickles pitched that one after the, uh, you know, after after they won their semifinal two to one. Two uh, to one. Josh McDevitt threw a heck of a ball game too. Yeah, the McDevitt kid threw a great ball game in the uh, semifinal, and then it looks like uh, you know. Looks like Effingham just hit the ball extremely well. It looks like that was a two nothing game for and in, going into the fifth inning, and then Effingham scored six. Um, and six in the up, sixth, wasn't it? What's that? Yeah, six, six in, the, in fifth. the sixth. No, six in the fifth. Six. Oh, in the fifth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and with Marion, I mean, you know, Effingham obviously you have a, a gap in pitching between Josh and everybody else. I mean, the Nichols kid's a good, a good pitcher, but he's not Josh. Yeah. And we discussed with Josh throw the first game because you got to win the first one to get to the second one. Um, and, you know, that's a big win for them. And maybe Marion's the same way, got a really strong pitcher. Yeah, and, and you know, that. but let me tell you something. That's why Effingham, for, for some of the low points that they had in the season, um, you know, they got off to a bit of a slow start this year, as I recall. Uh when they have that one-two punch, when Nichols is throwing well, and you know what McDevitt's got, you know, I mean, that that can carry you a long way in postseason play. Have I mean, they played Troy Triad this year? Uh, I don't think so. Nine- Somebody locally has. Oh, no, yes, they did. They did play Triad like a long. It was like their third game of the season, fourth game of the season. And they lost four nothing. That was March twenty fifth. So. Right. Yeah, and I knew, and I'm not so sure. Some another local team hasn't played them. Let me I look. T Town maybe played them down Edwardsville. Well, let me if you give me if you if you give me a second. Let me look at Triad. Triad 24 and 11 by the year. Effingham 19 and 15. Uh, triad schedule. They have played. Uh, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling, and I am seeing. I'm not seeing any. Not seeing any real local teams besides okay. like Salem, you know, which is not really uh, right. no, nobody in the immediate area. Okay, so. I thought for some reason when T Town played that triple header down at Edwardsville, 
that they fell into that, but maybe not. And of course, Effingham, you know, they went and played in triads sectional last year. Was that triad sectional or the regional? Uh, but, uh, you know, they're, it's a team that you run into a lot, I think, right. 3A, just because of, you know, the, their traditional strength. And, yeah. You know, so. And they play Wednesday? I, I'm looking that up, too. I want to I wanna be sure. It's Tuesday or Wednesday? All right. Effingham plays triad on Wednesday. Both of those games, and that's Centralia hosting, by the way. Um, Going to be hot, Whitey. Yep, Mount Vernon and Mascuda play a four o'clock game Wednesday, and then uh, Triad and Effingham play afterward. Well, so, it'll be ten degrees cooler than the start of that Mascuda game. And in uh, Triad, of course, they won. Uh, they won the Jerseyville Regional. They beat Highland one nothing in the championship. I don't know. I can't. When it gets to be three A and it gets to be these schools down south, I or really right. anywhere. I'm not going to be able to give you. But a, I mean, with Josh McDevitt throwing your first game, anything can happen. I mean, and and they played well behind him. Um, you know, who knows? Yeah, that's. I mean, he's he's the he's the real deal, and um, it's an equalizer. You know, it. Uh, that's the thing about baseball. You know, any other sport, really. Like the better, the better, more talented team from point A to point B, and you know, from the top of the roster to the bottom of the roster is probably going to win, right? But um, baseball can have those games where you got the one stud pitcher, you know, you can, you can take a team that's probably better than you on paper and in their yes, season. I... So hopefully, hopefully that's what, uh, Hopefully that's uh, what the Effingham can continue to do. They can keep winning. Yeah, that'd be great. See, I mean, I saw them when they played North Clay. I did that game on the radio, and not one of their better games of the year. So I'm glad to see they've turned it around. Yep, I mean they're you know they could get a 20th win, which who you know that's, that's a, a good number. Yeah, it's a good number. I don't. They're they're not worried about win totals at this point. They're worried about advancing. But that's uh, right. They're worried about playing one more. But they've already you know they've. They're already playing with house money a little bit because, you know, I mean, they were lower seated than Marion. So that's already an, an, an upset, so right. to speak, there. On paper, uh, tri- Triad got a number one. So, you know, they're clearly uh, pretty highly regarded. Uh, we'll just – we'll have to wait and see. And I, I do real quick want to look at last year's uh, – I want to look at last year's brackets because I'm almost certain that Effingham – They played Triad. last year? Now it was Muscuta that beat Effingham at Triad. That's what it was. So uh, it was Muscuta that ended Effingham's season at the Triad sectional. So Effingham uh, won the regional last year, went down to Triad and got beat. Maybe uh, maybe things will go a little differently this time. So that leaves us with St. Anthony softball because it's not just the St. Anthony baseball team that's playing in a super tomorrow. No. Softball team really got up off the mat in the championship game. And uh, I was listening. I was listening to you, and I got called away when it was 6-2, and I really felt like I wasn't going to be an option to go anywhere Monday. This is before I decided not to go Monday. And then I come back, and I hear you and Greg both sounding like you're going through puberty, and you're just talking about it's now 6-6 going to the bottom or going to the top of the seven. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm going to – full disclosure, I had – more or less in my mind anyway, sort of written that game off because uh, the Tolono kids, and this was the sectional championship at Tolono Unity. So Tolono playing on their home field, uh, they had, they had taken a three, no, a four, nothing lead. And then St. Anthony had got a couple back in the fifth. Uh, They got a, um, they got a, a, Cameron Rios hit a triple, and then uh, her sister Addison grounded her, grounded out to get her in, and then Addie Wernsing hit a hit a home run. So they got a couple runs back there in the top of the fifth, and you're thinking, okay, you know, we got a ball game. But then Polono immediately answers with a couple runs. Yeah, put two right back on the board, and I agree with, with you. And so you're just thinking, this this just isn't going to happen. They're hitting the ball pretty hard, you know. Lucy Lucy Fearday doesn't. And we've said this a million times, but she's not a power pitcher. She doesn't rack up the strikeouts a lot of no, times. She relies on low movement. And uh, they were 
while they were sometimes hitting the ball on the ground, they were still hitting it hard and getting it through the infield. And it just didn't feel like she was going to miss enough bats for like, if, I mean, it felt like Tolona might score more than the six runs they scored, but you know, she got through it and they got to that top of the sixth inning and what a top of the sixth inning it was. First of all, Lucy led that inning off and got a base hit, hit a ball hard at the third baseman, couldn't make a clean play, but I, I called it a base hit. I don't, it was, it, you know, this is one of those deals. Like I, I don't, I couldn't not call the hit as hard hit as it was. And then Sydney Kibler hits a double drives in one run. Then Anna Faber. Now Addie Wernsing, I mentioned her home run a minute ago. No doubt about it. Faber hits a home run that just did just did crawl over the fence in left center field. But I mean, and then you're thinking, Oh my goodness. Like, this is and there's still nobody out and they've yeah, already searched five. Game. Yeah. But then they did manage to get a couple outs. They got Hatton and they got Vonderheide out, but then get to the top of the order. And Cameron Rios was just unbelievable in that game. She ended up going three for four with a walk. And her first at bat, well, I'll tell you about the first at bat, but she doubles in that sixth inning with two outs, and then her sister Addison singles her home and we're tied. Okay. Rios. She tripled, she doubled, she had another hit in that game. She led off the game with a hit, and for the second straight game in the sectional, she gets a leadoff hit taken off the board because they say that she was out of the front of the batter's box. She gets that little running start. You right, know? right. And and I asked, actually, we had a pitching lesson with Lucy this evening, uh, with Lucy Fearday, my daughter did, and uh, I asked Lucy, I was like, has Cameron gotten called for that very much during the season? And she said, not really, you know, uh, just same guy behind the plate, both games. Uh, no, I don't think so. Now it had been the same crew. It was the same crew. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing rumors that possibly that crew was tipped off about it before the tournament perhaps. And said, you know, somebody said, Hey, you should watch this, which I don't know if I, really uh, appreciate that i mean it's gamesmanship i guess but it's well, also and you don't know if it's true first of all. first of all i don't know if it's true i will say that i will say that that's a that is conjecture that's hearsay that's a rumor but uh you know i talked to somebody who i i play poker with a judge he'd throw you out of court right there <laughs> all i will say is that i talked to somebody who wouldn't lie to me i won't say who but uh mm. but uh, but uh anyway she seemed like maybe she was – it seemed like maybe it flipped the switch for her a little bit because after she got called for it in the semifinal game against Bloomington Central Catholic, and, again, that led off the game. It was the top right. – that was the bottom of the first. Uh, then she she proceeded to go uh, – she proceeded to go 0 for 4 in that game. Um, seemed like it might have made her a little tentative in her approach. And maybe I'm wrong, but that's how that's how it appeared to me. Right. Boy, she just she was scalding the ball the rest of uh, the game and you know got that big two out double off the fence she just hit that thing too hard by the way she, she hit a triple in the same spot the inning before and it was it kind of hung up in the air long enough and she's so fast like oh yeah she was in standing up this double was hit so hard even she couldn't turn it into a triple and then again uh kid sister addison drives her in so six to six that's where the rally stops and then Lucy goes out, Lucy Fearday goes out in the bottom of the sixth and throws the only one, two, three inning of the game for either pitcher. Uh, and what a time to do it. Get your right. right back in the dugout with the bats in your hands. And also Lucy led off that inning as well. Since they batted around, she was the leadoff hitter the next inning. She draws a walk. And then Sidney Kibler doubles the immediately doubles that runner in and they're leading. And you're just thinking, there's no way they're going to lose this game. There's just no way. Well, they're going to lose. And I heard someone say when it was eight, six, I believe they're going to win, which is kind of like bagging the bats. And then I hear you got the best two hitter the unity has back one, two in the bottom of seven. So, but, but listen, I did say that. And yes, St. Anthony did score another run and a favor drove in another run. She had a great game. She's the number seven hitter for St. Anthony, by the way, they got, they got five hits. And five RBIs and three extra base hits out of Sidney Kibler and Anna Faber, their six and seven hitters. It's Can't be understated enough how good they are up and down the lineup uh, hitting the ball. 
but yes, uh, they took an eight, six lead in that bottom of the seventh. And, and I did say, I did say on the air pretty much, you know, there's, I just don't feel like there's any way they're going to lose. And yes, Colono did get a couple runners aboard, but that's the story of, I mean, that's what Lucy worked around. It got a couple of ground balls and, and that was the ball game. So, you know, they won, they survived. They play Quincy Notre Dame tomorrow at Milliken. Yeah. And, uh, I asked Lucy what she knew about them. She said um, they have a left-handed pitcher who's a pretty good pitcher, but an unbelievable hitter, apparently. And, um, you know, they lost to Tolono when when those two teams played. So not a lot of common opponents, you know, not much to not much to go off of. But apparently, um, I don't think Michaela, but one of uh, her assistants, whether it was her dad or somebody else, apparently went and scouted their when scouted Quincy Notre Dame's they played uh, Friday. Yeah, well, I think I think uh I think a lot of the softball sectional championships were on Friday. I think it might have been more unusual that they played this one on Saturday. I don't right. know. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but uh hey, St. Anthony in 2A this time after going to state uh two years ago in 1A, you yeah. know, last year Tolono knocked them out at the sectional championship level. Mm-hmm. Um this time around, they get uh, get a little revenge. They had already beaten Tolono once this year during the regular season, and that took extra innings, but they did do it. And uh, you know they advanced. And I getting to getting to the Elite Eight and Two A, you know, a huge accomplishment. I don't know what's sure. going to happen. It's, they're doing such a good job, and Michaela's done such a good job with them. And um, you know, like you said, they're fun to watch. They've got a lot of kids who can play and. Yeah. I heard you and Greg talk about maybe the most important player of the game may have been one of the courtesy runs. Well, you know, um, I will say this in, in the semifinal game, in the semifinal game. Okay, that's what it was. Then. And we can, we should touch on that because they beat Central Catholic three to two or two to one on a walk off in the semifinals. Okay. Yeah, um, on the drop pop up. Yeah. Well, and, and let me tell you something. I mean, it was she was backpedaling, I understand. Uh, yeah, Tyler Repking showed me the video afterwards. And actually, there the Bloomington Central Catholic shortstop had to go. She she had to travel further for that ball than I thought. It's still an error. She dropped a pop fly off the bat of Cameron Rios and allowed Abby Hatton to come in to score the winning run in the bottom of the seventh. It was a walk-off win. But, uh, but yeah, Nora Ganaway scored the first run for St. Anthony which at that point tied the ball game at 1-1. Uh, Central Catholic had scored its one run in the second inning, and Central Catholic has a stud pitcher by the name of Emily York. Uh, I think it's Simo she's going to, something like that, to pitch. Um, now that I say that, I might be wrong, but she's definitely going somewhere to pitch. And uh, so Anthony was having a hard time getting anything going. But, uh, again, Lucy Fearday led off the fifth inning with a walk, and Nora Ganaway, the courtesy runner, comes in. And yeah, she she advanced on a wild pitch where it was a bang bang play, no hesitation. And right. then um, she also she she took uh, she she took third base on a on an infield hit off the bat of Anna Faber, which then set up Abby Hatton's uh, sacrifice fly to left field. And and again, every one of those plays was close. But uh, no hesitation, which sometimes courtesy runners come off the bench and they're cold. You know, they're not they're they're not locked in because they haven't been out there with the adrenaline running. But uh, but Nora Ganaway ran the bases superbly and scored that run. If she doesn't get a couple of good jumps in that inning, they don't score that run. Okay, and they don't win. They probably don't win that game. I don't know. But they they had to manufacture that run against this York girl. And again, neither run that she gave up was because she got hit hard. It was just right. circumstance more than anything. So yeah, really uh good, big shout out to Ganaway who, you know, not going to get a lot of the fanfare with the rest of this team, but. Uh, well, but no, she- and that's the thing, the courtesy runner, you're usually forgotten. Heck most times when I do stats, I, I still say the other person had run scored, you know, but uh just hustle being ready to play and then, you know, getting in and doing your job. That's the key. And, um, you know, Michaela doing such a good job, but I'll tell you what, having 
Tim, at your, as your first oh, base sure. coach. Oh my goodness! And and it seems very. Trust me, I, I watched him coach my daughter travel ball and help with junior high ball, and they went to state uh, one year. Morgan's junior or saw or seventh grade year um, when Michaela was a senior and that crew and uh, just knowledge but yet knows how to share his knowledge with the kids, knows how to motivate kids, doesn't degrade kids. Yeah. He's, he's, he's an asset with a capital A. And it's, and it's hard to do. And, and like I've started to dip my toe in the coaching water the last couple of years and it's hard. And, and I know high school is probably different than like 10 and 11 year olds, but like you can know, you can know what's supposed to happen but being able to communicate that effectively and and get uh, kids to listen to you, take you seriously, and then actually want to go out and do it, uh, not everybody has that gift, you know. Not everybody can make. Right. And happen. I watched him do it with young kids that age because yeah. that's when they started tra- playing travel ball. So, and, yeah, and, very impressed. And those two seem to really be like having the time of their life working together too. And that's yeah. that's a fun that's a fun dynamic to watch. So well, yeah. and every once in a while they got to go ask Chops and get a little input on some things. And uh, you know, I know he's not going to be bashful about sharing, but it is. Um, it's good for them. Good for their family. Yep. Glad to see you. Yep. Um, so anyway, best of luck to both St. Anthony teams tomorrow. Uh, hey, it'd be it'd be nice to to have two state tournaments to try to cover as a radio station. Well, at least they're both in the same town. No. Yeah, they're both in yes. Peoria. Yep, they're both in Peoria. Yep. We'd probably. Yeah, I, I got some information kind of concerning something we've already t- talked about a little bit. Go for it. University of Missouri fired their baseball coach today. Well, and that's where the that's where the uh, yeah that's Josh where the, McDevitt is signed to go, and I'm pretty sure their pitching coach, who I know impressed Josh, had a health issue and may have passed away within the last year. Also, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. You see, kids sometimes get close to the time they're supposed to go, and that commitment reopens all of a sudden. So. Well, and I had little bird tell me that the Walters kid from Muhammad, who's supposed to go to Arizona, is looking to be a first or second round pick yeah i mean in in it with the velocity and that not don't be surprised if josh gets picked by round 10 i was told yeah which is awesome there's a certain line in the draft and it's changed a little bit because they have uh they've shrunk the the amateur draft down and they go after more uh high school pitchers than they ever <laughs> have before they do, but there is you. It's a big decision for a player because the money the money drops off pretty uh, substantially uh, between the fifth and tenth rounds. And you just kind of have to decide, like, you know, what uh, what's important to me. You know, uh, do I want to do I want to go to a big? You know, you're going to have, if not Missouri, a number of quality programs where you could go. And, and can people with. reach out to you, or is that considered tampering? Since you've, I don't know those rules. I, I, yeah, you're asking the wrong person, but uh, oh, and did you see who's going to a regional? Yes, EIEIO. I, I, uh, they, they had a, they had a, uh, they beat Moorhead State in the championship game of the OVC. Yes, after losing to them, and I didn't watch the championship, but I watched their first game with Moorhead. Uh, it's a double elimination tournament, right? So they in the ninth inning, in the bottom of the ninth, um. But uh, I think Moorhead State was the number one seed there, and uh, Eastern was what four or five, five yeah, maybe and five, and they came back and they came back and got the win. It's been a great year. That's uh, the first time I think in sixteen years that they have won the Ohio Valley, uh, and the softball team, same deal. You know, it's been uh, yeah. They got to the regionals, didn't score a run in the regional, but you're in the deep end of the pool. You yeah, you know, it's 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 tremendous for the programs and uh yes, it is. you know those are those are those are programs that don't get a lot of fanfare. It's it's always interesting to me that even at Eastern where like it's not a powerhouse basketball or football school, right? But those are just the those are the sports that people in the community care about. Right. You know? And and they were pretty good when I was a student there, Whitey. Yeah, I mean there's there's been times, of course, but they had uh, a Duckworth kid. It wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not denying that Eastern's had their ups in those in revenue sports, but uh in foot, football they had this quarterback named Peyton. 
Yeah. I don't remember personally, you know, I was going to uh, see them on campus. That was pretty cool. But uh, I did get to, I did get to see that Garoppolo guy play a little bit and that was pretty yeah. fun. So, he's injured again. I heard. I've heard. Yeah. He's uh, apparently maybe not going to be the guy in Oakland after all, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, yeah. Well, they're not in Oakland anyway. They're in Las Vegas. Okay. Old habits die hard. Hey, can I help you? Your, your, your cat's given us the best view of anything that we've seen on that Come side on, of the Charlie, camera all night. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Sorry. I was, when he got his nose in my face, I figured, oh, where's the other end? Yeah, oh, there it was. Right in the camera. Right in the camera. And you know what? We won't edit that out just to no. show we don't edit anything out. No, that's, I don't, that's, I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> no. Literally. I, I gotta get up, you know. I gotta go to bed, get up early, and go to go to Decatur. All right, well, early, that's good. Good not week. As, not as early as somebody who would have to go to Carbondale. But so. you know what? I'll be up. You want me to text you when I get in? No, I'll be up. Don't worry. I will be up by five thirty, just because for some reason, when you're on the eve of turning sixty, your bladder likes to play like uh, bingo with you. Yeah, right, I, it's four thirty. Hey, it's five. Well, I've, I've, I know, I don't know from experience, but I know how it goes. I've seen people deal with it. And if that's the, if that's the worst of your problems, you'll, you'll be okay. Oh, man. All right. Well, I think we can, uh, unless there's anything. Else on it. Hopefully we got some uh, state camp coaches we're talking to next week. Yeah, that would be awful nice. Wouldn't it? Uh, that yeah. would be, that or would just be, uh, get the state. You don't have to win it. I will interview you anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, and for the national trail conference, if they were to get another team there. All right. Here's my outside the box. Um, what did uh, McLovin used to call him? His. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what he called. If St. Anthony wins state. In one a major, major push to end fall baseball. You think people are going to. Oh, what happened when the world's greatest team, Harrisburg, got shut out by T Town? They almost did it then. Well, that would be unfortunate because I I love fall baseball and I, it's great for the kids too, right? Like, I mean, it's you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I guarantee you, momentum. There are coaches who already have the resolution typed up, waiting to go to the IHSA. Well. Then what's next? Are they not allowed to play in the summer either? You know, they no, no, no. It's it's that that is an advantage. I will say that it is an advantage. It's an advantage, but you know, good coaches and good kids win. I don't know. It sounds it sounds a little sorry. I know. I'm just telling you when people think there's an advantage, like Chicago Public Schools, kids can go from school A to school B without moving, then you get these things. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Let's hope. Let's hope that St. Let's Anthony, hope it is brought to the forefront. Yeah, let's hope that St. Anthony does it. I'm obviously pulling for him, and uh, I don't. You know, they've got as good chances as anybody. It's a it's fantastic, yeah, fantastic lineup, and got they three do. pretty good pitchers they can rely on. Yep, a lot of fun to watch them, and, and we. I mean, that's the recipe. Honestly, a lot of kids and a lot of kids swing the bat. They don't have that Dustin White hiding in the eight hole that they can get that guy. Dustin White gets benched by the middle of his senior season. We got a freshman that hits better than you do, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna. Was that it. Kerner? Did Kerner do that to you? I I don't have any hard feelings. It was Preston Robinson, and he was he was a better hitter than me. P Rob. Yeah, it's it is what it is. I still had fun. That's all that matters. I could I could have I would have taken a few more innings on the mound, but uh, that's okay. All right. So anyway, let's uh, let's reconvene next week, and hopefully we'll have uh, okay. hopefully we'll have some state championships or at least some state tournament games to talk sure. about. Sure, be That's awesome. Great. All right, Mike, take it easy. Hope everybody's doing well at your house. Glad to ever glad you Baby got steps. back Baby in the fold. Steps. All right, all right. Well, we'll talk to you later. See you, buddy.